Building a geological disposal facility for the UK's higher activity radioactive wastes will use standard civil engineering and mining techniques appropriate to the underlying rock type. Once in operation, its procedures will be similar to those used today for interim surface storage of the wastes. Because of the hazardous nature of the waste to be disposed of, the facility will require sound scientific and engineering expertise to ensure its radioactive contents are safely isolated from mankind and the environment over very long timescales. All of these factors are being considered by our Radioactive Waste Management Directorate staff who are making initial plans for a facility. At this early stage, there are many things we do not know the answer to, including the geology of a site. So, we are conducting needs-driven scientific research and development to ensure our work is based on sound science. We can set out in broad terms what we expect will happen in the development of a facility over the first few decades after a site has been selected and necessary planning permissions received. Before that happens, a volunteer community would make a decision to participate and put forward potential sites for further investigation. We will need to spend five to ten years taking a more detailed look at the rock under these sites to see if it is suitable to host the facility at depths of between 200 and 1,000 metres below the surface. The surface-based investigation techniques used will depend on the known rock type at the sites, which could be hard rock rocks like granite, lower strength rock, clay or mudstone, or evaporates like salt. Teams of geologists and geophysicists will arrive with their specialist tools and vehicles bearing seismic reflection equipment that will transmit sound waves into the ground and record them as they are reflected back to the surface by the geological layers and structures below. The information will be relayed back to a control room where it will help build a 3D model of the rocks below the surface. More intrusive investigations using deep and shallow drilling rigs will be deployed above the planned location of the underground facility and also in the surrounding area. These rigs could operate 24 hours a day and will drill vertical and inclined boreholes to investigate the exact rock types at depth and how quickly groundwater moves through the rock. Samples of rock and groundwater will be collected for analysis in laboratories to understand how the rocks will support the engineering structures and how the groundwater may affect the construction of the facility. These investigations will help build up a detailed picture of the underlying rock. In a staged process, we will present all of the evidence gathered from these investigations to the local community to support their decision about whether to host a geological disposal facility. The government will then make a decision about the preferred site. Once this decision has been made, the necessary local and national planning permissions will be sought as well as formal approvals from the nuclear and environmental regulators. When all of these have been obtained, the site will be fenced off and construction will begin. We estimate that during the following construction phase, a workforce of up to 1,000 people will be needed. The topsoil will be stripped and the site levelled. The soil will be strategically used to build screening and so lessen the visual impact on the local environment. The main access road will be constructed and drainage facilities installed to enable the mining and construction activities for the underground excavations. If required, a rail link could be added at this time. The first buildings to appear will be the mining support, administration buildings and maintenance workshops. Equipment used in the early construction of the four shafts, including tower cranes, will be replaced with temporary shaft headworks which will enable the shafts to be constructed. Once the shafts are complete, permanent headworks are installed. They will house the ventilation system and shaft top structure. 
The winders and cage system are used for raising and lowering workers and surveying equipment to and from the surface. The shafts are likely to be excavated using standard mining techniques like drill and blast in strong rock. The resultant spoil is hoisted to the surface and conveyed to the spoil bunker. The newly exposed rock is then scientifically mapped. A drift providing the waste transport route and also transfer of the operational staff to the underground support facilities may be constructed at this time. It and the shafts will be critical to the ventilation pathway for the facility. In some situations, shaft access only may be feasible. If a drift is used, a road header machine will dig out the first 1,800 metres of the drift to a depth of about 300 metres. This machine is designed to excavate an accurate tunnel profile. At a depth of 300 metres, we would expect to find harder rock and from this point drill and blast techniques will be used to excavate the rest of the 2,500 metre drift down to a depth of about 650 metres. Once the shafts and drift have reached the required level underground, they will be connected to form the ventilation circuit. Then, the waste receipt and emplacement facilities can be constructed. Further investigation regarding the suitability of the geology to host a facility is likely to take place alongside the construction activities. The underground roadways will be excavated to allow construction of the disposal vaults for the intermediate level waste, which is expected to be the first waste to arrive at the facility. These are likely to be created using drill and blast techniques. Once excavated, the vaults will be lined and a floor slab laid. A crane will be installed along with monitoring equipment. Back on the surface, in tandem with the underground construction programme, the rest of the site will be developed including the waste receipt and dispatch rail sidings and the rack and pinion railway system that will take the waste underground to the receipt facilities. Further infrastructure will be added along with a management centre, workshops and laboratories. A purpose-built visitor centre could also be included. The spoil arising from the mining operations will be used to build more screening mounds and these will be landscaped with grass and shrubs. Excess spoil may have to be transported and managed off-site. Once the nuclear regulators are satisfied and therefore able to approve our safety case, the site will be ready to receive its first consignment of waste and commence operations which could last for over 100 years.